Draw near, brothers and sisters. Draw near to each other. Draw near to God. Come and let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let us give him the honor and the praise due his name. Good morning, People's Community Church and visitors. Thank you for joining us for our worship and communion services via the church website at peoplescommunitychurchdetroit.org and the conference call at 616-829-7869 and YouTube and Facebook live streaming. This is a time, a most sacred and holy time, a time when we reflect and we remember Jesus, his broken body and his shed blood. It's time for our communion. At this time, we invite you to join in with us. If you can get your bread and get your crackers or your wine and juice as we go through our communion. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, Gracious Lord, so to partake of this sacrament of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that we may walk in newness of life, may grow into his likeness, and may ever more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed in word, thought, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, and our bound duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Amen. Jesus took the bread he broke it, he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, broken for you. Let us eat of him. He took the cup. He said, This is my blood of a new covenant, shed for many for the forgiveness of sin. Let us drink of him. Let us recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God, praise God. Thank God that we are able to come together once again in the presence of a great and mighty God. We thank God for allowing us to be able to fellowship through the different forms of media. We just give all glory to our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. This morning, we'd just like to extend loving and comforting words to the family of Sister Vera Topol, Vera and William Topols, and the Jones family, David and Victoria Jones, and the home going and celebration of their mother and mother-in-law this past week. And we extend that same love, compassion. May God's peace be with each and every one of you who've had loved ones to go home to be with the Lord. Just know that God is with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you, and may the beauty and the legacy of your loved ones and the love of your loved ones give you comfort and strength on this journey. We invite you to please join us for evening prayer. Prayer is so important. When God hears his people talking to him, he moves. He has an ear to hear. So join us weekly evening prayer meeting at 515-604-9094. And the code is 518522472pound and on Wednesday at 11 o'clock we also have virtual <coughs> Bible study and the number is 515-604-9946 access code is 534347pound and also starting on August 16th, we will have virtual Sunday school at 9 o'clock. Please check our newsletter for further information. Or please feel free to call Sister Belinda Ebio or Sister Cheryl Hampton. There is information in the newsletter as to how you can be a part of this virtual Sunday school. And we extend a very blessed celebration to all of those with August birthdays. God bless each and every one of you. May he give you peace and strength and bless you with another birthday year. Once again, just want to extend blessings to all of those who work so diligently to see that we are fellowshipping, that we are connecting, that you have access to all of the things that we have, the, the worship experience, uh, preaching and teaching. If for some reason you know someone who is not receiving this and not connected, please call our office. Please call our office at 313-690-7913. We want everyone to be a part of our worship and spiritual growth experience. Uh, let us continue to pray for those we know who are homebound, who may be in nursing facilities, rehab facilities. Anyone you know, just let's extend love and let's keep one another in prayer. We give God the glory, we give him thanksgiving, and we give him praise. Be reminded that you can send in your tithe and give your offerings using post office box 2729 Detroit 48202, or you can use our People's Community Church website. We just want to give praise and thanksgiving to God already for the gifts. All of our gifts come from our God. We are good stewards, and we're extending those gifts and giving back to our King of Kings. Father God, we just want to thank you right now for these gifts, the divine love to me, that you would bless, multiply these tithes and offerings, bless the receiver, and return to the giver, bless and multiply. We thank you right now, Lord, for extending and given us and meeting all of our needs because it is not us it is truly you to you be the glory but once again i'd like to remind you please adhere to the guidelines regarding uh, safety 
with the coronavirus. We want to, God to touch and bless and protect and cover. And we at the same time will take the necessary me measures to bless ourselves and to be a blessing in the lives of others. This morning, our scripture is taken from Revelation chapter 1 and Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, and reading on, it says, The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty One. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw on my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. In Revelations 2, 8 through 11, to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, these are the words of him who is and the first and the last who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison and touch you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death. He that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt by the second death. This is the second church, the church at Smyrna. Over the last two first Sundays, we have been talking about the church. It's the first Sunday, um, let's see, this is July and May, June, July. No, this is August. We taught, we did a summary of the seven churches just to give you an overview of what was happening in each of those churches. On last first Sunday, we talked about the church at Ephesus. We got a basic overview that each of the churches were different. Seven churches, seven different <laughs> ways of worshiping, seven churches, some with solid biblical teaching and some with error. <clears throat> and those seven churches also represent models of what is in the world today. Not every church is the same. If that had been the case, many times people wouldn't go from one church to the next church. Some churches are strictly biblical and some churches are strictly worldly. And you have people who do not want to be transformed and they're looking for a church that's comfortable. <clears throat> but our Christian journey is a journey of transformation. 
out of those seven churches, Jesus spoke to five of those churches and said, there's a need for repentance. There's a need for you to turn around because there's some error and some disobedience in the church. But there were two churches that were on target and the church of Smyrna today is one of those churches. It was a church striving to please God, striving to live out their belief in the world. And this is what Jesus said to the angel of the church in Smyrna. These are the words of him who is the first and the last who died and came to life again. This could only be Jesus talking to the church. And he talked to each, he spoke to each and every one of those churches. The one who <clears throat> died is Jesus. He went to Calvary's cross. He was buried and he rose on the third day. Jesus living today and walking in the churches. As you know, we're not <clears throat> together in a physical building. We are, you hear me say this throughout the sermon, we are the church wherever we are. Right now in your home, we are gathered together as a community of faith. It was Jesus who looks to see what's happening in the church. Jesus who now sits at the right hand of the Father. Jesus, who sees all things. And he said to this church of Smyrna, he said, I know your affliction and your poverty. But he says, you are a rich church. But he says, I know your affliction and poverty. Smyrna was a church that lived out their belief every day. The church at Smyrna was thriving in the midst of persecution of Christians. For at that time, Christianity was new and there was persecution, persecution by Nero, by the Romans, but they stood firm in their beliefs. These were people who were real, they were not those who would just come to church or come into the church building on Sunday mornings when we were coming together with a very pious face and looking like church people should look, however that is. But their lives reflect the presence of God every day. It was reflected in the church on Sunday and it was reflected in the workplace on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And it was reflected in the community wherever they went. And it's reflected in the home and how they live their lives with their families. This was a church that would let their light shine before men. This was a church being transformed this was a church that did not put on a facade, did not have to wear masks, because this is who they were. They were a church eating spiritual food, digesting spiritual food, applying spiritual food, spiritual food, the word of God, applying the word of God by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives, indwelling them. Once again, the church is each and every one of us. We make up the church. We are the church and we represent Christ wherever we go. Smyrna must have been a church of unity where there was a spirit of unity and love. Now this was not stated in the scripture. God did not say that, but in contrast to the church at Ephesus on the last first Sunday, he spoke to that church and said that you have drifted away, you have moved away from your first love. And the first love of any church is our relationship with Jesus Christ. For God says, love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. For God is a jealous God, and he does not want us to have any other love before him. And he told that church at Ephesus, you have drifted away from me. 
Now, this church is Smyrna had to have been a church of love. It was a church of unity. It was a church of obedience, a church that was pleasing to God. To be pleasing to the Lord means there should be love. There has to be obedience to God, commands what he tells us to do. For obedience is an expression of love. All of these had to have been present at the church at Smyrna. Love is who we are as believers. Loving even our enemies and those who would persecute us or try to harm us in some way. As Christians, we walk in love. Love is what brought us into a relationship. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And Jesus obeyed and humbled himself even unto death on the cross so that we could come into God's family. Love is the fruit. Love is how we represent Christ in the world. Obedience is adhering to and living out and taking seriously the word of God. This church suffered affliction because they stood firm on the word of God. The enemy does not like it when the children of God take the word of God seriously. When they take the word seriously, they eat the word, they apply the word, they live the word, Satan does not want the truth to be revealed. Satan controls through deception and lies and fear. The truth is a light for the world. So this church was a light. This church was obedient, and this church also suffered persecution because of its love for the truth and living out the truth. The truth didn't just go in one ear and out, but it settled in their hearts, and it changed and transformed their lives. They were eating and living, and that's a cry to the church today, to eat spiritual food and live it out in the world so that others can see Christ in you. We are ambassadors of Christ. And some of you have taken that word seriously, and some of you may have experienced opposition when you step out on faith as you are trusting and talking to God on this journey. You've experienced challenges and opposition because Satan controls through lies and deception. Obedience to the word of God takes the believer into a new arena of embracing the truth, experiencing the truth, and seeing for yourselves that God's word is true and that God will honor you as you take him seriously. Opposition can come when you're taking the word seriously. It can come from anyone. Don't ever be deceived and say, so-and-so will never do this to me. Oh, I had a friend once tell me, he said, you know, I know this particular young lady, and she will always do just this, and will always do that. And I said, you know, sometimes people change. And we have to be mindful that our hope is in Christ Jesus, because it is he who controls the hearts and minds. God can use your enemy to bless you on this journey. But when we focus our eyes on a particular person to help us on this journey, we can lose sight of what God can do and how he moves. Don't even be surprised if opposition come in your own family. I have seen and know of situations where family member would tell you, this is not what God has placed in your life. This is not your call. This is not your journey. Don't be surprised who the enemy will use on this journey to deter you, to stop you, to block you, to discourage you, because he doesn't want to see you get the victory. He does not want to see you embrace the truth of God. But we as a church, we must stand for the truth. And we have to remember we have a friend in Jesus. Remember, when opposition comes your way, we don't fight with flesh and blood. Don't fight with your sister and brother. Don't fight with your wife or your spouse or your friend. 
Ephesians 6 tells us we are in a battle, a spiritual battle. We're standing on God's promises and his truth. He says we are fighting with principalities and powers and rulers in high places. So don't get caught up in the horizontal battles and going back and forth. But you need to be in a vertical relationship, and that's with Jesus, knowing that God will fight your battle. As you stand with the whole armor of God on, you must use the word of God, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, that will bring down the enemy. The Apostle Paul stated, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, and we're not. When you've been in a battle, you see what Satan's trying to do, and you become a, alert of what, who he's moving on when you're standing for the truth, and you're pressing through by faith. You will see those who will try to come up against you, but stay focused. The important thing, know that God is always with his people. He was with the church at Smyrna. And Jesus is with you in the midst of your challenges, your tribulations, your trials. Don't get hung up in the midst of what you're going through, but know that the Lord is with you. He's holding your hand. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. But we must stand for the truth. For Christ left the church here to be a light and to be sought for him. Let us stand. Let us stand for the truth. Now this church was poor economically. Maybe they didn't have a lot of resources, but Jesus said they were rich. He said they were rich. They were rich in their relationship with Jesus. They were rich in knowledge and power of the world. They were rich in their faith. They were rich in their maturation and spiritual growth. They were true representatives of Christ. They were ambassadors of Christ. They were letting their light shine for Christ. The world knew that they were different and the ch church endured some slander. That meant somebody was telling some lies. There were lies being told against this church that was living for what was right and pleasing. There were some untruths, and the word says there were some Jews, but they weren't sisters and brothers who had a relationship in Jesus. Jesus said they were from the synagogue of Satan, and we know Satan is all about lies and deception. These Jews were antagonistic to the church of Smyrna, People do not want to see you as you're walking out your Christian journey. They might tell a few lies or slander, or say things about you that are truly untrue. But when that happens, we have to stay the course. They told lies about Jesus, but he stayed on his journey. He never lost sight of his purpose. We must stay focused and stay on our journey, for our journey is with Jesus. We are placed here in a purpose, with gifts, to live out Christ on this earth. We each have a purpose. We each must embrace our purpose and not allow fear and lies and deception to cause us to lose our way on this journey. We must embrace the truth. And when lies go forth, and if your ears happen to pick it up, go and explore the truth. See what God has to say about it. Let us not be caught up in lies and deceptions and fear and not trust in the power of the living King who now sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Let us be those children who give him glory in how we live our lives. Many people hear and they never explore. They never explore to find out what is truth. They will buy into a lie in a minute. And unfortunately, that created havoc, well, it 
created some discomfort and infliction in that church at Smyrna because of what was being told. And we must be mindful people that everything we hear is not the truth. Ask God, he'll give you the truth. The Lord has given us the Holy Spirit to enlighten us on this journey, to take us into truth, to grow us, to strengthen us. We have to be discerning Christians. We must seek the wisdom and knowledge of God so that we can embrace what is true and not deception and walk past and let our light so shine before men. Once again, slander is only a tactic of the enemy. Lies, a tactic of the enemies. Let us not be those who fall into Satan's camp, for he is a deceiver, and he's behind all lies and all untruth and all fear. We must, when we hear things, the word of God says, test the spirit and see if it's from God. But don't worry about the slander. Don't worry about the lies of what people say. Just continue to live your life trusting in Jesus who said in Psalm 37, 5, commit your ways to the Lord, trust him and he will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness like the dawn, your justice like the noonday sun. Christ is your defender, your protector. God will allow your light to shine before men. The Lord will defend your cause because he is the one who is with you on this journey. The battle is not yours. The Lord is with you as you live out your purpose for him. The purpose that you were created for. The purpose that you were brought into this world for. Stand in the midst of lies and deceptions and fears and distractions. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand and see God move mightily. I was listening this week to Michael Youssef, beautiful message, how God protects his people. He says, some will come waving their swords in the air, trying to bring you down, but he said, they don't realize that God has a shield of protection around you, that he is your refuge and your strong tower and your protector. And many times we lose sight of that, that God, if he's for you, who can be against you? And we have to remember what the word of God tells us so that we are strengthened. Like he told Joshua, be strong and very courageous as you step out. Be strong and very courageous. Those words resonate with us today, to be strong and very courageous as we walk this Christian faith. Because you're gonna need faith if you're gonna live and be a victorious believer. You're gonna have to step out against the opposition. You're gonna have to step out about the lies you hear from sister, brother, wife, sister, friend, whomever they may be. If they're not on the journey and they're not in the word of God, then you're gonna have to love them but dismiss what is being told to you. See God, always your eyes look into the hill because God is the source of our supply. We're gonna to have to hunger and thirst for truth. We're gonna to have to get into the word of God like the Berean church at Acts 17 who searched the scripture each and every day so that they would know the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You gotta hunger for the word. You gotta open up the Bible. You gotta read the Bible. You gotta search the scripture. You gotta believe it, embrace it, live it, eat it. The church at Smyrna was a church like that and is a model for churches today, a model for people to hear the truth, to hear and embrace the truth of God and to be a church of faith. Be faithful, hold on, walk by faith, trust in the Lord, don't give up, know that God is with us. God is with us. Faithfulness is being victorious. Being faithful will lead you to the victory. Remain faithful day by day. Faith for each day. Not yesterday's faith, but you're gonna have a fresh faith. A new faith for a new situation today. 
a new faith for whatever Satan tries to throw your, throw your way today. You're going to have to be close to the Lord and know that he's with you as you walk this journey. Faithfulness is the way of the believer. We live a life of faith. That's why we are believers. We came by faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. We are trusting God each and every day by faith for all of our needs. He is our provider. He is our Jehovah Jireh. Your faithfulness will be a blessing in the lives of others, and their faithfulness will be a blessing in your life. This scripture to the church of Smyrna speaks to the church today. We are to be the church where the seed falls on good ground. And Jesus told this parable to his disciples. And he knew they didn't understand what it meant, so he gave them an explanation over in Luke 8, 11, and 14. He said, this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. So they never come into a relationship with Jesus. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they will fall away. There's testing on this journey, people. God's going to test you as the word comes forth. You got some tests, just like you have in school. God has some tests for you on your journey of spiritual growth and transformation. The seed that fell among the thorns stand for those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by life worries, riches, and pleasures. And they do not mature. They don't grow up. But the seed that fell on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hears the word, retains the word, perseveres with the word, and produce a crop. We are to be the church where the seed falls on good ground. We are to be the salt and the light of the earth. We are to stand and show others the way to salvation and eternal life and to spiritual growth and enlightenment. We are to be the rich church, the church that is rich in our relationship with our God, a church that is rich in our good works, a church that is rich in our relationship with others. Thank God for his Holy Spirit who is constantly at work in our lives. As we are the church and not the building, he is working to bring forth transformation in our lives that will glorify him. During this season of coronavirus, the church is still the church. We are still worshiping our God. That is what we do as the church. We're still in communion with one another. We're still praying to our God for our world, our church, our family, for one another. We are still the church, whether we're in a physical building or not. We are God's people. God hears us. He is with us. And during this season where we cannot see each other's beautiful faces, let us grow closer to our God. Let us stand for what is right. Let us stand for what is truth. Know that God is with us on this relationship and on this journey. He will keep us and sustain us even in this season of this virus. God has a purpose for this virus. But let us get closer to him in prayer. Let us grow closer. Let us trust him. Let us vow to be a people who will walk by faith and not by sight and not by fear, not by lies, not by deception. But we want the truth. We want a hunger and thirst for righteousness. We give God the glory today. We thank him for Jesus. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for his abundant grace because he gives us grace, his unmerited favor to sustain us on this journey. Grace to grow, grace that brought us into a relationship, his amazing grace, his endless grace that he showers upon us, his mercies that are new every day for us. 
Thank God for Jesus. Thank God that he brought us into his family. Thank you, Jesus, that we have an ear to hear what you're saying to the churches today. Just as you spoke to the angel of the church at Smyrna, Lord, you are speaking to the angels of the churches today in 2020. So let us represent you. Let us represent Christ in the world. Let us represent and we can be assured of victory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. May God's peace, grace, his love dwell richly in each and every one of our hearts. Praise God. Please join me in reciting the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God has gone forth. And if you've heard the word and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, we invite you to come into the family of our Savior because the gift of salvation is free. The word of God says, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. The scripture tells us, Anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. So if you have received him, the gift of salvation, we invite you to call our office at 313-690-7913. And someone will call you, talk to you, and help you on this journey of salvation, your Christian journey. The Lord tells us to pray without ceasing. Pray and don't worry. Talk to him because he has an ear to hear. For prayer changes things. It is that time for us to talk to our God. We need prayer, people. The Lord is waiting for us to pray and to talk to him. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, we bless and praise you today. We thank you for the many blessings and gifts that you bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, that you brought us into your family. We thank you that Jesus humbled himself, that he bled, and we remember his bleeding and his broken body today on this communion Sunday. We thank you for the blood that cleanses us. We thank you that we're overcomers because of the blood. We thank you right now, Lord, for granting us life and life more abundant. We thank you for abundant blessings, Lord, in our lives. We thank you that we know a God who sits high and looks low, and we know that heaven overrules and superrules. We're so blessed to be in your family today, Lord. And we are praying for comfort and peace, Lord, for those who've had loved ones go home to be with the Lord, that you would wrap your arms around them, that you would give them hope and strength for the journey. We're praying for those who are sick and shut in, Lord, be it in their bodies, in their family, someone they know, we're asking you to heal because you're the God who restores health. As Jeremiah 30, 17, I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. Jeremiah 17, 14, I am the God who heals. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that by your stripes we have healing and we can come to you and ask for healing and health and hope. Father, we're just thanking you right now 
for your holy presence in the midst of what's happening in our nation. Father, we're asking you to move mightily to protect your people, Lord, who are enduring the coronavirus. We're asking you for healing. We're asking you for protection. We're asking you to move that, that, that uh, virus away from your people, Lord, for we are the church and we can talk to you because we have a relationship with you. We're asking you to move the virus away in Michigan and all the other states that are enduring this virus, Lord, that you would spare your people, that you would bless your people, for your body was broken for them, Lord. Your blood was shed for them, Father. And we're asking you to move mightily, that you would send a, continually send a revival in the land. Enlarge our territory, Lord, at People's Community Church and all the churches, Lord, for you desire that none of your people would be lost, that all would come into a saving knowledge of who you are, Father. We're praying for People's Community Church and all those in the sound of my voice, that your blessings and peace and grace and mercy will be over these, your people, that you would protect them, Lord. Praying for our officers, the leaders of our church, that you would lead and guide them in all the decisions that are before them. Lord, that you will get the glory. Your purpose will prevail, Lord. Your plan, your plan will manifest because you told us you know the plans you have for us. And they are not evil. And we're just thanking you right now, Lord, for blessing, for healing, for guiding, for protecting, even in our cities, our states, and those who are making decisions about the lives of your people. We're asking for your wisdom to prevail, Lord. Your wisdom, not the wisdom of man, but the wisdom of God. <clears throat> we give you praise today and we magnify your holy name. We're thanking you right now for keeping those who are working diligently and saving lives, those first liners, whomever they may be, those who provide services for us during the season. You, we're asking you just protect them, Lord, cover them, refresh them, renew this. We know that it is difficult. So this virus has been going on for some time. And Lord, those who have to make decisions, be governors, presidents, whomever they are, and get weary from day to day, there are decisions to be made. So we ask you to refresh them, Lord, and that your will be done. Your will be done, Father. We thank you this day for your abundant blessings. Thank you for guiding us, for keeping us, for protecting, for our hope is in you. Our hope is in you. And we pray, Lord, that we will be the church, that will be the light in this world when people are hurting and lost and do not have hope. We're praying, Lord, that we will be the light. And we're looking to you, that you would keep your arms protection over us, your grace new, your grace new every day. Your mercy is new every day. Lord, our hope is in you. And we're thanking you right now for hearing our prayer. Thank you for the cleansing we have through the blood. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your abundant blessings today. And we ask it all in the blessed, sweet, majestic name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God today. And we are drawing close to the end of our service. And we want to just thank each and every one of you for joining us today. Our Facebook uh, conference call line, uh, YouTube this week. We thank you for being with us. We pray that the seed has fallen on good ground, that each and every one of you will be blessed on this journey, that you would continue to walk by faith, not by sight, not by fear, but know that God is with us for he will not leave us nor forsake us. And we're thanking each and every one of those who've been a part of this worship experience, our People's Community Faith family, Brother Wolf, Brother Ford, Furtado, uh, Brother Dan Breckenridge, and Sister Spears. We just want to say thank you uh, for being with us, Sister Pelham, uh, Sister Barnes, all of them a part of this production. Sister uh, Topos, Brother Williams, we thank each and every one of you. Without this technology, <clears throat> we would not be able to speak with you and you would not be able to hear. Just know that God is in the midst of all of this. And may God continue to bless and keep each and every one of us. Thank you, Brother Collier, our worship leader today. To God be the glory. May God continue to strengthen each and every one of us. Let us receive the benediction. <clears throat>
God be merciful and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth their saving health among all nations. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Once again, we look forward to fellowshipping with you and worshiping with you on next Sunday morning, same time. Thank you for joining us, and may God's grace and peace and love be with you this week. God bless you richly and abundantly.